This is the machine we're going to install Ubuntu Desktop 9.04 onto. We're going to give it the name of Matrix and after starting out with DHCP we're going to eventually give it a static IP address uh, ending with .202. This is an 800 megahertz machine with 526 megabytes of RAM and a 30 gig hard drive. The first step in this process is to go to the Ubuntu website and download the image for Ubuntu Desktop 9.04. The downloads are easy to find. For a Ubuntu Desktop machine we are going to download the latest version of 9.04 this being the summer of 2009. For our server though we will go with the longer support window and the more stable release of 8.04, specifically 8.04.3 for our Ubuntu server. But now let's download the desktop edition and then we'll burn it to disk. The ISO image is approximately 700 megabytes and with that you will burn a CD-ROM. Some machines require you to hold down the F2 key other machines require you to hold down the delete key and depending on your motherboard and BIOS it could be some different key or combination of keys in order to enter setup and control the, the order of boot devices. I'm just pressing F2 now as the machine first gets into its boot up. So it says it's entering setup and now we'll be able to make sure that I can select the CD-ROM as the first boot device. Okay, it is set correctly. So I will just exit out. Now before power cycling for the reboot to make the installation, I'll just put in the CD-ROM. And now the machine should boot up on the CD-ROM drive and bring us into the Ubuntu installer. And there we go. Before we get into the installer, let's talk about our partitioning plan. That will be the first step of the installation. For this setup, I'm going to put everything having to do with Ubuntu and, and all related data or applications under a single partition mounted on the root of Slash. Because it's a 30 gig drive, and even if it was a, a 20 gig drive or so, uh, 12 gigabytes for this hold everything single partition is sufficient. Any hard disk can have only up to four primary partitions and if you generally want more partitions down the road you need an extended partition. One of those primary partition slots can be an extended partition and then contain an unlimited number of logical drives or logical partitions. So the simple way to set this up based on that is our first primary partition will hold the 12 gigabytes for everything having to do with Ubuntu. We will then create a single extended partition and then create two logical partitions within that. The first one we create will be one gigabyte of swap space. The second one will be the remainder of the 30 gigabyte disk on this machine so 17 gigabytes which we will just create almost as a uh, placeholder mounted at slash data and set it there for future use uh, we could always use it at any time to put large amounts of data or database files something like that or we can delete it recreate it into other partitions down the road and put another system on this machine maybe get into dual booting or multi booting And now we will begin going through the installation, the first part of which will be partitioning. But first we select our language. 
then we just simply select to install Ubuntu. You wait for some stuff to load and initialize. And we wait some more. And a little more. And now the Ubuntu desktop GUI installer is coming up. The GUI installer for desktop is quite similar to the text-based installer for Ubuntu server. Essentially the same questions. The partitioning is slightly different. You actually get more options in the server install. I won't go too slowly through all this because it's all pretty straightforward, the questions you ask. I'll slow down when we come to the more critical questions. You answer questions about location, time zone, keyboard, stuff like that. And after really just a few questions, the partitioner comes up. We will partition disks manually. Well, for starters, this entire disk needs a new partition table. You get a warning about losing data. Now we select this free space, and then we choose to make a new partition in it. And as I showed in my outline, we're going to make an initial primary partition of 12 gigabytes. At the beginning of the disk free space is fine. Of course, we're going to be using ext3 file system. The mount point is slash. This is where everything for Unix or Linux is going. We now select the free space again. Select new partition. Now, although we're shown the options of a primary partition or a logical partition, technically speaking, we'd be beginning a new extended partition, which takes the place of a primary partition. That extended partition can then have unlimited logical partitions within it. So it would be nice to see this expressed as an extended that can have logicals within it. But I, I know what the partitioner means here. We do want a logical. Now this one is going to be our swap partition of one gigabyte. And here we select it to be that special type of partition known as swap area. There is no mount point relevant and this is grayed out. We now have our main partition for everything and our swap partition and finally we select free space once again create our last partition. This will of course be a logical partition within the extended. The extended partition we created contains the swap partition and contains this final logical partition. And I don't like to ever use the complete space left, so I'll just trim that back to the nearest gigabyte. EXT3 is again correct. We will give this our own custom mount point of slash data. We don't have any specific purpose for this leftover space partition just yet, but if you put a large database on this machine, you might use it for that. You might also repartition it into sm multiple smaller partitions and turn this machine into a dual boot with another operating system on it. And there is our final partition plan. We haven't really changed the disk yet. 